Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and it's our favorite time of the week because, you know it, we've got the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. So let's check them out. All right, first up, it is exclusive time and we have a new iteration, an updated version, shall I say, of our Chris Reeve Sabenza exclusive, and they have just landed. Here it is. Looks very similar uh, to what you saw last year, but a few key upgrades. First and foremost, MagnaCut blade steel, the thing we've all been waiting for on the classic Sabenza drop point profile with a hollow grind and a stone washed finish and double lugs, double gold lugs on this particular blade, a bit of a rarity from the Sabenza. Now let's talk about that steel real quick. It is very special, Magna Cut. Uh, if you're unaware of what it is, uh, chances are if you're in the, the uh, market for a knife of this price range, which we'll get to in a little bit, you already know what it is. But if you don't, it is a definite upgrade over the S45VN uh, that the uh, original run of this exclusive came in because in addition to having better edge retention, than that steel. It's also more stainless than that steel, although both are pretty stainless. It's also considerably tougher too, as in stronger, not so much, you know, it's a different spec than edge retention, but it is a tougher blade as well. All three of those, uh, those areas of knife performance, it scores really high marks. And especially on a knife that's kind of renowned for its hard use capability, the extra toughness is a really cool thing. And the other update here is a new batch of the GL Hansen & Sons G Carta inlay, which I think has even more character to, the, to it than uh, the first run of this exclusive. You can see some very cool kind of patterned texture going on that's, that's you know, more complex or, or more, more character full than just your run of the mill uh, end grain cut micarta. Looks very nice, but the green and the uh, gold accents look great together. Has a nice classy touch to it. And I think that's kind of the magic of, of this exclusive, for me at least personally, is it's a mix of kind of the, the blue collar and the white collar, the, you know, the, the hardworking and the you know nicer, fancier aesthetic in a way. Then with the Micarta inlays, or sorry, G Carta inlays, I should say, uh, on the other Micarta inlaid versions out there, typically they come with the rougher blasted finish to them, gives it a bit tackier feel. Uh, we'll pick up scratches a little bit more easily, but you get a little extra grip, a little bit of extra traction. This version has the glass blasted finish instead. So it's not quite the rough blasted finish, but it's not the high polished finish that the wood inlaid versions get again bridging the gap looks a little classier hides the uh, the scratches from your uh, pocket wear and use a little bit better and then the uh, stone washed blade finish of course also will hide scratches as you work with the knife it's such a cool thing plenty of grip there blade length on them uh, about three and a half inches sorry 3.61 inches on these bad boys feels great Frame lock with the ceramic ball interface there, angled pocket clip so it keeps pressure off the lock bar. And then as far as opening action, you're dealing with washers in the pivot so you don't have that swift flicky action, although you can make it happen with this if you get it just right. But it's a bit of a smoother, more stable feeling, more fluid action rather than free floating. And of course it is more stable too because dust, dust and grit and grime is less likely to get in there. It's just a fantastic piece. It's an expensive piece, $755, but I think it's got a really cool combination of features and yeah, my wallet's going to be a little bit lighter this week. Unfortunately for me, they're just very, very cool. Next up, if you like a premium titanium frame lock knife, but you don't have that kind of money, this, this knife is, is still not cheap, but <laughs> it is much more affordable than that Sabenza. New uh, Eric Oaks design, this is the Lantra EDX. Uh, there are a few different versions. They started about 310 for the plain titanium version. Uh, this Purple Haze Fat Carbon comes in at about 350, and there's about four different versions we have on our site in that price range uh, between those two points. Really cool little knife. 
Now, as far as the quality of the, the knife, the brand is Oaksworks EDC, and the OEM for this is Riot Knives, so you know the quality is quite excellent. Blade length is just under three inches, and it's got one of those cool kind of hybrid blade shapes. Push comes to shove, we'd probably, uh, I'll probably classify it as a drop point, but it's kind of a bit of that thing that we see where it could almost lean into like that modified Warncliffe stage, but there's way too much belly in here to, to call it that in truth, but it's got that cool organic flow to it. Uh, M390 steel, if I didn't mention that already, fairly high grind, not a, a super, super thin slicer with the geometry going on here, but it's certainly gonna be more than capable. It's not, not a pocket wedge of a blade for sure. Good, uh, good stability with some pretty good slicing too. The handles are titanium. As mentioned, you've got the purple haze fat carbon inlays on this one, both sides. Milled clip, as you can see. And my favorite part about the handle is the milling around the pivots. It gives you some nice texture there, but it's not gonna interfere with the pocket clip because it's ahead of that area. But it's really nice for a pinch grip. Pinching right around the pivot, you've got extra traction there, lots of control, which is very nice. If you needed a full grip, you do have that finger choil there. You could do a full grip for me anyway with my slightly larger than average hands. Just do be careful of that sharpened edge there at the back of the heel. But what I like about the handle, even if you're not using that, it's got a neutral enough shape that it doesn't, it's not gonna cramp different hand sizes. It, as you can see, works really well. Kind of a three and a half finger grip for me without using the choil. Very, very nice. As far as the action, you've got ball bearings in this pivot, frame lock as you can see. Two opening options, you've got the front flipper, which I've not been able to flip really well, but it does the slow walk really nicely for me. And then you've got the thumb studs, which you could of course slow walk or pop open in a very satisfying manner. Next up, another slightly uh, less expensive, but still expensive uh, knife that you, if you don't have Sabenza money this week, uh, the Chavez Redencion Street uh, from the Ultramar sub brand is back. I'm pretty, I'm almost positive we talked about these before, but New Drop has just landed. Price on these are about 345, I do believe. Two blade shapes, you've got the Tonto and the Drop Point here at the bottom, both of them three and a quarter inches long, M390 steel, both of them with similar compound grinds. The tips or the, uh, the point areas are flat ground and the heel and the back straight edge of the blades are all hollow ground. They feel really nicely made. These are also uh, manufactured by Riot. More simple kind of blocky, brutal design language to it. Skull pocket clip is standard, but it also comes in the package with a non-scully pocket clip as I fumble around. There we go. How about that? <laughs> if you want a, uh, a little less um, aggressive pocket clip, shall we say. Always, I love to talk about the blade or the lock bar cutout on these knives. It's so fine, such a precise cut that looks and feels great. It just gives you a little bit of extra satisfaction. And what I really like about these is I've kind of given uh, this knife uh, a little bit of a hard time in the past, perhaps, about being a little more difficult to open than some. I am not finding that to be the case with this particular batch. As you can see right there, it just pops. Super, super easy. Ball bearings in this pivot, but I'm not even attempting to you know, make sure I'm not putting any pressure on the lock bar, which could, could introduce some extra friction from time to time, depending on the design. I'm not even worried about that. I'm not even conscientious of that. I'm just picking up the knife and it pops so, so nicely. I don't know if that's something they did done differently in this batch or not, but whatever's going on here, it works great. Feels great. Build quality is world-class. Like I said, it's made by Riot. There you go. In stock now. Well, at least in stock when Thomas and I are filming this. So there's that. It should still, I'm, I'm assuming it'll still be in stock when this video goes up. I think we've got plenty. Famous last words. Links in the description below. Uh, next up, we've got some more MagnaCut on the table. Some MagnaCut autos, in fact. The first is the Heretic Manticore E. This is uh, one of the mid-sized versions of the Manticore lineup with the uh, 3.05 inch blade. $650 for this knife. Made in the USA, this is the Predator version. And if you're uh, familiar 
with your film history, you'll know exactly why, based on the markings on the blade, first and foremost, but it also comes with a really cool predator head fob or predator head bead on a fob included. And I'm assuming this is cast, actually. I, I didn't look into the construction of the bead, um, but it's really finely done, adds a really cool little extra bit of fun to the knife, which is itself also excellent. Action is great. The switch there is not too punishing to use. Tonto profile on this blade, a little bit of a, uh, a thicker edge geometry here, not a uh, everyday super slicer, but you've definitely got some durability in that blade. The Magna Cut for one helps that, but also the stouter geometry will do that as well. Milled pocket clip, it is reversible and a block out plate is included on the backside because this is not a tail mounted uh, clip like a lot of OTFs in this genre can be. But instead you've got a fixed tail with a carbide or a uh, ball bearing style glass breaker there at the back. The advantage of this style over some of those other OTFs that I just mentioned or that other style is it's more comfortable whether you're using it in a twisting piercing motion or you just have big hands and fall off the edge of a handle like this. That's a cool thing. But the build is great. The build is great. It's great. It's very great. Um, apologies. It's a, it's a great knife. But we have another MagnaCut knife, another MagnaCut Auto that again, if you don't have heretic style money, how about the Kershaw Launch 15? Here you go, 140 $5, just under, in fact, with a three and a half inch Magna Cut blade with the black wash finish. There you go, boys and girls. It's a great steel and it's a great blade shape too, as far as I'm concerned. Spear point profile, single grind with a, a high flat geometry with the secondary bevel and a great big old honking swedge on the back. Fantastic for everyday utility. You've got length to get big jobs done, but the narrow, narrower profile here means you don't sacrifice too much nimbleness. And that's likewise the, st the story with the handle. With aluminum construction, it doesn't feel super heavy. Again, it's nimble, it's balanced. I mean, the whole knife, man, this feels really light. 3.1 ounces, that is really good for a knife this size with an automatic mechanism too. Oh my goodness. Definitely easy to carry day to day. Part of that's the aluminum construction. Part of that's how slim it is when it's folded up. Very cool. And then of course, the other part of that, the third part is the deep carry pocket clip, which is going to make sure it sits really unobtrusively in your pocket. Very, very cool. Haven't talked about the inlays yet. Canvas micarta, really cool. Uh, technically, it, it, this might be like an olive uh, or an OD green micarta. We just say micarta on the website. It's not quite natural. There's there's a hint of green to it. Natural tends to uh, have sometimes a warmer or browner tone to it. Just anyway, hasn't ripened yet. It hasn't, this one's not ripe yet, you guys. Leave it on your counter for a few days in a plastic or not not a plastic bag in a paper bag. That'll brown right up for you. Wonderful. But it is whatever. That's that's funny. I enjoyed that. But <laughs> back to the knife. It is cool. The launch series has always represented a fantastic value for what you're, you get. They are American made. They're made in the same facility that the uh, ZT knives are made in. You get good materials. You get good action for not too bad a price. Like I said, for a USA made automatic magna cut knife of this size for 145 bucks is quite frankly insane. In fact, I gotta check this now. What is the uh, the Hogue Deca in magna cut? What's it priced at currently? I feel like it's about the same. Uh, sounds right. Deca magna cut. What do we got here? What do we got here? A hundred and Oh, $135 for that. So this is not the least expensive USA Magna Cut blade you can get a hold of, but it's pretty close to it and it's bigger and it's an automatic to boot. Well done, Kershaw. I mean, seriously, that is fantastic. All right, next up we have this knife. This is actually 
a closeout. This is, uh, we got these direct from Benchmade. This is the 2022 SHOT Show Special Edition Mini Adamas. It features burgundy canvas micarta handle scales. Apart from that, it's the same as the standard Mini Adamas with a three and a quarter inch blade, crew wear blade steel. Very tough customer right there. Very good performance out of that with the gray coating to keep corrosion at bay because it is not a stain resistant steel, of course. The Adamas is such a cool series. I'm so glad they brought it back when they did with the crew wear steel and updated the design a little bit. It's a great pairing, that hardworking steel with the strength of the axis lock with that crossbar style mechanism right there. Advantages of that is of course, finger safe, keeps those fingies out of the way of the sharp edge. It's ambidextrous to boot. Each hand can use that easily. If I weren't so clumsy with my left, it would look a lot better. And to keep that ambidextrousness going, you've got a reversible, fairly deep carry clip and nice oversized thumb studs there that are gonna be easy to use even with gloves on. I love the handle shape of the Mini Adamas especially. This is one of those funny things where I don't need a Mini Adamas in my life, but I felt like I needed the full size Adamas in my life, so I bought one of those and have it and enjoy it. But I think the Mini Adamas is actually a better knife in a way. It's certainly a, a different class of knife because of its size, but it is more comfortable to my hand than the bigger knife. And you've still got stout, hardworking quality and something easier to carry every day. So this is one of those things where I say, do as I say, not as I do. I bought the, the big one. You should buy this one. And actually the uh, best part about this knife, apart from it being good, is the price. Because this is a closeout knife, we're able to sell these less than they were originally going for but wait till you hear this, you guys. 175 for this knife. That's insane. USA made, high quality stuff, and that puts it at, do the math, carry the two, what, like $85 less than the standard Mini Adamas goes for right now, which is like 261. Did I do my math right? I don't know. Sounds like good math. Holy crud, that is honestly a fantastic deal for these, but it is a closeout, so act now before they're gone. All right, next up, we have got another ambidextrous quality knife. This is the Cold Steel Engage. This is the smaller version of the knife with the roughly three inch blade. A uh, couple versions of this knife. We've got this one right here with black G10 handles and an S35 VN blade coming in about 135. There is also a less expensive version with injection molded handles and 4116 steel, this is about $64, which is uh, the least expensive way to get the Atlas lock yet. I don't believe they've put that on anything uh, at that price point yet. Um, so that's cool. But back to the version that's not in the uh, annoying plastic packaging. Uh, a note about the blade length. Uh, right now, uh, our website says three inches. Cold Steel's website, I believe, says three inches. It's actually like three and an eighth. I'll see if we can get the, our, our spec updated on that. So if you need a knife that is three inches or less based on where you live, what the uh, the local situation is for you, this one's not quite gonna cut it without kind of modding the, uh, the blade on you. But anyway, S35 VN Steel, really cool treatment to the spine here. Gives it a little bit of extra flair and also gives a nice resting point if you wanted to choke up with your index finger where I might use that to more carefully use that tip, whether you're doing it with your index finger or your thumb. It's less about control here and with your thumb and more about a heavier push perhaps, but I really like it in that, that index finger thing right there. Actually, one of the other cool things about these smaller versions of the Engage, this three inch, and they have a, a two and a half version as well. The cool thing about this versus the 3.5 is the handle's a little bit different and slimmer construction overall, less kind of pocket tank chunky, more everyday slice friendly. I mean, look at the thickness of that blade there, or lack thereof. Still plenty strong, but this is gonna be one of the slicier, more affordable cold steels out there. Really cool, and the S35 is gonna give you good edge retention too. That slim nature carries back to the handles also. You can see right there, not too chunky for your pocket carry. We do have fully ambidextrous control points on this knife too with the thumb stud right there, which actually, yeah, yeah. So th they do what they do so typically here. 
one side it is usually it's more noticeably smaller. This one is just slightly smaller, but it is threaded. So you could reverse this around if you wanted to. I don't think you would need to because that still gives you plenty of thumb stud there without having to reverse it. So that's nice. The Atlas lock is ambidextrous as well with its spine mounted position there and deep carry pocket clip is also reversible. So fully ambidextrous as well. As far as the actuation of the lock, it is a pull towards the spine. So it's a little bit trickier to use quite honestly on these smaller knives than on the 3.5. But I gotta say the three, it's doable. Like you said, you do have to choke back, but then you can do that wrist flick thing. Now here's, here's where I bring you closer. I'll tell you a little secret. Bring, bring it in. Bring it in. There is a smaller version of this knife with this lock. I think it's too small for this lock. Reason being, look, I have to choke way back on here to get, to be able to do that wrist flicky thing. And I barely have enough to do it. And I've, I've done it on the two and a half inch and it feels really, it feels not very one hand friendly. It would feel much more like a two handed close. So just keep that in mind. If you're interested in that smaller size, it's probably gonna be a more of a, uh, a two hand operation to close the blade. You're not gonna get that same flicky feeling without feeling like you might lose the knife. At least that was my experience on it. Be that as it may, they're all built really well. So there is that to consider. There you go, check it out. All right, next up, we have got a new Bally from Revo Knives, which is uh, essentially the same company as BRS, this, the uh, same people involved. Here you go. This is the Nexus Balisong, $211 and some change. Same high quality you would expect from a BRS product is on display here. You've got a four and a half inch clip point blade, 154 cm with a stone washed finish. Cool grind, kind of a mid height or saber height flat grind with an aggressive swedge on the back. And the handles themselves are aluminum. Four piece scales here, or four piece handles, they're not uh, channel milled. But as far as the action goes, it would take someone better than me to uh, fully display how good it is, but it feels great. Now here's where things get interesting on this one. The pivots are actually ball bearings, which they don't feel like ball bearings. It's interesting. I know a lot of folks prefer uh, washers or bushings over ball bearings on a balisong. Some people think, you know, you know, washers make, help make the handles go too fast. This has more of a feel like a washer than most ball bearings, uh, ballets that I'm used to flipping. Your mileage may vary, but hey, that's my observation right here anyway. Ceramic bearings in this pivot. Maybe it's the ceramic that makes a difference. I don't know. In any case, it feels great. The price is at a pretty good point too. There you go. Next up, we have the Spiderco. Fred Perrin designed Subway Buoy. A few of these back in stock uh, while we are filming this. Uh, the satin version is already sold out again, but we have some, uh, some black versions still in stock at the moment. More of course on the way in the future, but very cool knife here, 125 bucks. Uh, this is one of the Seki City Japan made blades. You've got an LC 200 and blade steel, which is very cool. Great toughness out of this steel, great stain resistance and respectable edge holding too. Very cool. We're kind of seeing uh, Magna Cut maybe take away some of the LC200N's thunder, which is kind of a shame because it is an excellent steel. It has great, great edge stability. I have you know twisted some blades with this steel through knotty hardwood before, and I've frankly been very astonished at how well the edge holds up to that type of frankly, abuse. It's cool to see it uh, when we do. Blade here, 2.8 inches. You've got this long straight clip style to the blade shape. The grind itself is saber height flat, so it's not really a, uh, a scalpel, scalpel type of geometry, but it's still gonna be a nice aggressive cutter. It's still gonna be fairly efficient, just that if you're looking for ultimate efficiency on a small knife like this, you might want to uh, look elsewhere. But like I said, nothing to worry about in terms of its performance, I think. Uh, the handles are injection molded. It's about a two to two and a half finger grip, depending on your hand size. 
still feels fairly stable. Maybe part of that is due to the aggressive finger groove here uh, that we see on a lot of Perrin's stuff, but it feels fairly stable. I'm trying to convince myself that it doesn't, but it, it does. Yeah, feels good. As far as the sheath goes, it is Kydex or uh, Bolteron, actually. And what I like about it is the angle of the handle here. A couple things are nice about that. Well, I'll get to what's nice about that here in a second. It is designed uh, primarily for neck carry. It comes with a, uh, a breakaway ball chain right out of the package for carry thusly. But what I like about that angle is if you were to pocket carry this knife. Now th the holes here look a little widely spaced apart. Um, so I'm not sure about uh, compatibility with what particular style of ulti clip, but I think there are some ulti clips that would, would fit this. And if not, it'd be real easy to uh, drill an extra hole here because you definitely have the space. With this sheath held straight up and down like this, the angle to the handle right there for a pocket carried fixed blade is really nice. Makes it a little easier to draw and a little easier to resheath as well because you're you know, bending your wrist a little bit less when you do that sort of uh, orientation. So it's pretty cool. They're built well. They are going quickly. Like I said, we actually, I don't even know if we, uh, if any of the satin versions didn't just go to filling our pre-orders, but we do have a few of the, uh, the black ones in stock right now. But of course you could always put a, uh, a pre-order in for either if they are out of stock. All right, next up, let's go from really small to really big. We have a new buck flipper. This is the Highline XL. Fairly affordable too, uh, $55. You get a three and three quarter inch D2 blade here. So materials and price are right on track and the handles are a little more complex than some of the uh, stuff, similar stuff in that price range, which is cool to see. Well, let's get back to the blade, big, aggressive. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say cleaver blade, but almost a straight razor style to it, D2 blade steel, which is not very straight razory, but that high, almost full height hollow grind is very straight razory. And as such, you get a very thin cross section in the geometry right behind the edge there. Very, very cool. But the spine is still thick enough, you're going to have a decent amount of strength. The handles themselves look like cast aluminum and we have micarta inlays on these black micarta in this case looks really great against that copper. There's also a, uh, a silver anode version of uh, the aluminum too. Uh, both of them at the uh, same price, I believe, yeah, 55 bucks. Deep carry pocket clip, it is reversible. You've got a block out plate there on the opposite side to keep things nice and classy. You've got an inset liner lock, really nice. The whole handle is gonna work for all kinds of different hand sizes. And what's cool too, and, and not necessarily immediately apparent, is there's a little bit of buck 110 DNA in this handle shape in terms of, you know, the curvature going on here. The advantage of that is that compatibility with a wide range of hand sizes. Very, very cool indeed. And let's check out the flipping action. Ball bearings in the pivot, flipping action. Flips actionably well. There you go. Very cool. Highline XL. Now buck, of course, is a very storied name in knife history probably more famous than this next one I'm going to talk about. But there is another brand going back even further than Buck Knives with even more storied history, perhaps, even if they're less well known today, and that's Marbles. And they had a knife called the Woodcraft. Now the original did not look like this particular knife right here. Um, it's more or less the same profile, though the blade shape was the same. The original Woodcraft was made in the USA, had stacked leather handles and a uh, stainless steel or carbon steel blade. Actually, don't remember the steel on the original originals, but an uncoated blade in any case. That version uh, is essentially no longer made nowadays in the States at least. They may have an imported version available. The cool thing is the folks who control the marbles name now have gone to Topps Knives. Very, very well known and respected American knife maker and have asked them worked with them to bring the Woodcraft back in a new updated format. So gone is the stacked leather handle. Now we've got Micarta natural with black Micarta inlays on each side. And you've got a 1095 carbon steel blade, a little bit thicker than the originals, but with a smooth coating. So you get some rust inhibi inhibition uh, to help against, to help protect that 1095 
without adding you know rough texture that could impede the slicing ability because ultimately this blade shape here that is all belly with the upswept tip is all about slicing this is a hunting pattern you could use it for other stuff too of course your bushcraft even maybe some uh other pokey things that you might be able to uh, think of but this knife has got a slice and this knife is going to do it it's got the profile for it. it's got the right type of coating full flat grind with a swedge it's got what it needs right there the handles are a little bit I mean I'm talking a tiny bit here larger than the original Woodcrafts I remember uh, handling some reissues of that classic style and there was just barely enough handle for me this one is just a breath more than uh, than I remember those knives having so I've got nothing to complain about with the hand si handle size here it works great for me it's built phenomenally well being a tops of course it's going to have their lifetime warranty gosh it just it feels super solid it also comes with a leather sheath here it is right there very nicely done and as you can see it has a snap over strap and extra bonus survival whistle you probably want to take that off before you put it on your belt but you know what I mean really well done I've been really excited to uh, see these come out since they showed us at SHOT Show 2022 so this has been a, uh, a long time waiting for this one really happy to see that it is uh, now available gosh very very cool and it's cool to think of that that partnership honestly between you know a brand like marbles and a brand like tops very very cool uh, I've got another cool essentially a collaboration here uh, to talk about from two other famous American companies case knives and Ontario knife company and that is with a new case knife this is the hardwood composite hunter a few different handle versions and the keen eyed among you will notice that this looks remarkably similar similar to Ontario's high peaks hunter design and it essentially is but it's just a little bit bigger uh, high peaks hunter had a 3.6 inch blade this one has a 4.4 inch blade this case version right here uh, price wise 126 bucks for each of these they come with these stabilized hardwood handles it's essentially a it's not stabilized hardwood per se it's actually uh, a laminated product similar to like pack of wood or diamond wood something like that so you've got the look of natural wood but you got a lot more stability and hopefully not going to swell shrink crack do that as much of that as a normal wood product would the fit and finish on these is honestly a little bit nicer than I remember the uh, high peaks hunter being I don't have one here to check uh, on the day we're filming unfortunately but the spine looks cleaner it's got a nice high finish all the way around everything's nice and flush the spine on this knife is even crisp so if you're the kind of one kind of person who likes to strike a fire steel with the spine of your knife you could certainly do that right here uh, blade steel 420 HC it also comes with a leather sheath actually a very similar leather sheath to the tops that we just looked at there it is you got your fold over strap and a belt loop on the back the black leather feels good nice and stiff but it's gonna wear in I think quite nicely you've got plenty of handle to hold on to but if you wanted to choke up for the finer stuff you do have a pretty generous choil right there although I'd probably go in and kind of round the uh, hard corners off of that with a ceramic rod or something so it wouldn't bite quite so much you got the same kind of sharp tendency or crisp tendency there as you do on the spine easy to fix but something to be aware of for sure and last but not least keeping the kind of classic vibes going we've got a couple of uh, slip joints from the James brand to talk about uh, these are some new additions we have the pike this comes in about 249 dollars this knife has a 2.3 inch Damascus blade Warncliffe styling with a full flat grind and according to the labeling here on the blade this is actually damas steel so that is a powder metallurgy Damascus styled product so you got CPM 154 levels of performance or RWL 34 levels of performance very cool look very good performance to back it up too it's not just a pretty face and the handles here are really well done it is a slip joint but as you can see no visible pins from the outside walk and talk is decent you've got a half stop there and all the pins are hidden by these wood inlays essentially 
that look really good. It is a rosewood inlay. You've got the uh, James Rand icon here at the back uh, acting as the, uh, the shield there and a nice hidden lanyard point at the back. It's a really classy piece. I've actually never held or I can't remember holding any of uh, the any of the the pikes earlier or the, the James brand pikes uh, previously, which is kind of a shame because I'm really digging this. It's got very comfortable feel in the hand. The fit and finish is excellent and it looks great. Nice and stylish. Uh, we do have another to take a look at. This is the Wayland or Wayland slip joint. A little bit less expensive, 219. Uh, and performance wise, your edge retention should be a little better than the Damas Steel here because we have CPM S35 VN. So you don't get the nice look, the aesthetics of the Damascus styling, but you do get higher performance out of it. We've got a three inch blade, pretty much exactly three inches according to my ruler. Uh, and the blade here is, leans a little more towards the sheep foot, sheep's foot than the Warncliffe, even though on the pike it's maybe a yeah, it's it's pretty worn cliffy, but it's not a super acute worn cliff. I'd probably call this uh, this Wayland the sheep's foot. Oh, that's kind of close too, isn't it? Uh, handles here, same deal, no visible pins. You've got the uh, rosewood inlays, and I believe this is a titanium bolster. Can I confirm that? If it is, we don't say it on our site, but it feels like it should be. I don't know. Uh, Two hundred nineteen bucks for this. If I I didn't mention. Again, we've got a nice half stop. Walk and talk feels even better uh, than the pike opening. We've got two grooves cut in, uh, acting as nail nicks there towards the end of the blade. Works really nicely in a pinch. You don't even need your fingernails to do it. Nice classy thing here too. No, uh, no hidden lanyard point and no included fob on this one, but that's very easy to do yourself if you wish to. And I really like the uh, the icon there in the bolster the, as uh, instead of a shield inlay going on. I think it looks great. All right, that's all we have for today. Thanks for sticking around. Let me know what you thought down in the comments and to get your hands on any of this stuff, check out the links in the description below to take you to knifecenter.com. While you're over there, don't forget about our knife rewards program because if you're going to buy one of these knives today, might as well earn some free money to spend on your next ones. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera, and we're signing off. See you next time.